Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to show you in this video how the equation features here in a Google Doc work. Uh, how you might end up with a very uh, professional looking equation like this one. This is an equation you should be familiar with. But I'll show you how it comes about. So up here in the insert drop down menu, you can find the equation option right here. Click that. And you can just see that there's this light blue box where the cursor is now located. And it's inside that box. That means inside that box is where the equation will show up. That's where you're going to type it. In addition to that, up here on the menu bar, you see various new options here, new drop-down menus, like Greek letters. If you want to type a delta symbol or a theta symbol or any other Greek letter, there are a lot of these that we uh, won't use, but you're familiar with a couple of them already. Here, there are uh, symbols for mathematical operations and some other things, for example, if you want to multiply, divide, and so on. Right, all right, oh, cool, infinity. Uh, then the next one uh, is some inequality symbols and some others. We won't use those typically. Here, this is going to be a very useful drop down menu for you. This one, it says math operations. All right. So you, just, you open this up and you can see you can create fractions. You can put something under a radical symbol. You can have subscripts for a label. You can have superscripts for an exponent. You can put a line over something. In other words, if you would like to use this kind of symbol to indicate the average value of something like average velocity, uh, you, you sort of could use this option. There are parentheses and brackets you could use for some more advanced mathematical symbols. Some of you might recognize some of those. And then here, just a bunch of arrows. If you want to draw arrows to indicate something, this is a cool way to do it. So, uh, how does an equation get built? Well, what I want to do here, oh, I'm going to point this out to you. I just clicked here somewhere in the main area of the document, and the blue box has disappeared. The cursor is no longer inside of it. But I've got some arrow keys on the keyboard. If I just go backward with an arrow key, not the backspace, I just use the backward arrow. I'm now back inside that blue box. And so I can move in or out of that blue box using those arrow keys. So now I'm in front of the blue box, even though you can't see it. I'm to the left of it. I go to the right one click, and I'm now in the blue box where the equation can be typed. If I go to the right again, I'm now out of the blue box. Where the, so the equation is not going to show up outside the box. Uh, I can show you that here in this one. So the cursor is inside the blue box, so I'm in the space for the equation. And I'm just moving the cursor with the arrow keys right now, and you can see what's going on. Sometimes there's just a space that I add in order to have some clarity in the equation to space things out neatly. And I'm just going to the right more and more and more. It's just moving through the equation. And right now, with the cursor blinking, but you can still see the blue box, I'm still inside the equation space. If I go to the right one more time, I'm now outside of the equation space. And I can type, but it'll be normal typing instead of adding equation you know, parts. If I want to type equation parts, and also you can see since I'm outside the blue box, I should say, um, these equation menus are sort of disabled when you're outside of the equation box. If I go backward one space, I'm inside the equation box, and those options come back they're reactivated for you. So I want to point that out. That equation box down here is still there. It was just visible. You know, if, if there's nothing in it, you won't see that box, but you can still find it once you've created one. Cool. So I want to show you, for example, uh, in, this, in this equation that I've already provided, if I want to use this to, uh, just for example, I want to bring all the parts of the equation to the same side of the equal sign. Well, I've got all these parts here on the right side already, but this one's on the left side. And, and the way I want to format the equation, I would like to have all the all these parts of the equation on the left-hand side. You'll see why later. And so what I have to do is I have to subtract this part and this part from the right-hand side to move them over to the left-hand side. Okay, so uh, let's see. Well, I actually, do I really have to do that? Well, oh, that's one way to do it. That's one way to do it. 
Uh, th and there will be some minor signs, but the minor signs will mathematically be dealt with. It's a super easy thing to do. So what if I just want to type this chunk right here, the one half a y times delta t squared? Well, what I want to do is create a fraction for the one half. I'm going to come up here to math operations and create a fraction. So I can see that I've right here I've created a space on the top of the fraction and a space on the bottom of the fraction there. And what's interesting also on the keyboard, I, I can use the mouse and I can go from the top to the bottom, the numerator to the denominator and back. But I can also get the cursor after the, uh, the fraction and I can get the cursor before the fraction if I want to use the mouse. Uh, if you're a Chromebook, for example, maybe you don't have a mouse, well, you can use arrow keys if you uh, not sure if a Chromebook's keyboard has arrow keys. It would be nice if it did. Uh, I can just move forward and backward, or left and right, to move the cursor from various, you know, between various spaces. So let's say I want to write one and then move, and then go two, ooh, two, and then what I want to do is I no longer want to type in the denominator of the fraction. I want to type after or outside the fraction, so I can move the cursor right there, and then I can type the ay. So I got to come up here. One of these was, no, this one, no, this one. Okay, it might take you a little while to learn where these things are, but it's going to come pretty fast for you. I want the acceleration to have a label, so I'm going to do this. And I'm going to move the cursor so you can see. Right here, I can type the A, and right here, I can type the label Y. All right, so lowercase A, and then down here, I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard. A Y. Cool. Now, right here, I no longer want to type in that subscript area where the Y is. I want to type normal sized stuff. So I move the cursor one more time. You can see I'm still in the equation box, but I'm now no longer in the label on the Y. I'm no longer in the subscript. So now I need some parentheses. I can just type a normal parentheses if I want, or over here, I can do that. And that's kind of cool. Now I'm inside the parentheses, and I'm outside the parentheses. Inside, outside, inside. You get the idea. Uh, I want to type delta T. Come here to Greek symbols, delta, click, and then type the letter T. Cool. I want the delta T to be squared. And the parentheses aren't necessary, but check this out. Um, how do I get to, to a superscript? Well, okay. I kind of I kind of didn't think this through. A superscript is right here. Um, I want the superscript to apply to the parentheses in the delta T. So what I'm going to do is click and highlight that with the mouse. If you have a finger pad on the Chromebook, it's still doable. But now with that highlighted, math operations, right here, boom. Okay, now it looks like nothing's changed, except right there. This is going to be a superscript on that business I just highlighted, the parentheses and delta T. So right there, I can do the two. I have that exponent up there. Sweet. Uh, well, what if, so, so the, the, that chunk is getting added to this chunk, so a VYI times delta T. All right, cool, I wanna get out of the superscript space. There, and I'm gonna do a space for clarity so it looks sharp. Math operations, no. Here, I can, can I have a good plus sign right here. No, but I got a plus sign on the keyboard. Easy peasy. Uh, now I want to create the VYI times delta T. So I'm just going to type V. And, well, okay, again, I, I didn't foresee it clearly enough, so I'm going to come up here and do that after highlighting the V, because now I can do the label and I'm get out of the subscript. You see arrow key. Nice. Um, mathematically, what I have to do is the, these two get added together, but if I want to just bring this on the same side over here, I would have to subtract it. So I'm going to do space, I'm going to do a minus sign, space, and I'm going to do a delta y. Delta, just type a y. Okay, well now what? If I brought the delta y, no, if I brought the delta y over to the right hand side, what's left on the left hand side? It'd be zero. Oops, okay, I'm out of, out of the equation box, not in the equation box. So, zero. All right, so this is how you can use these tools in insert equation 
to create very professional looking equations in a Google Doc. Uh, understanding the math is still up to you. You still have to know what you're doing mathematically. Please don't violate any of the you know, rules of math, PEMDAS and all that stuff, but it's going to look so nice. In class, if you have questions, just let me know and I can guide you through it once again. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.